Hey guys, welcome back to Crazy Dave's Kitchen. Hey, I'm gonna try something I've never done before, but I've read a lot about it, and that's bacon. That's right, bacon. But I'm actually gonna do it three different ways. So this will be a three-part series. Part one, we're gonna have the honey bourbon from the Traeger's website recipe. Number two, we're gonna do the traditional bacon. And then number three, we're gonna do an apple wood bacon. So make sure you stay tuned and watch all three series so you kind of have an idea of how you can make bacon. Okay, so what's one of the primary first ingredients you must have when you're making bacon? Pork belly. Check this out. I got this entire slab of pork belly here. Look at the price. Two dollars and 89 cents a pound from Costco. Why did I get that so cheap? Because it's the whole thing. I don't know if you want to call it a brisket, but they just call it a boneless pork belly vacuum package. So because it's vacuumed that way from the manufacturer and a butcher doesn't have to trim it, you're not paying the inflated prices. So if you're gonna cook a lot of bacon, Ask your butcher if it's cheaper if you buy the whole thing uncut because you can trim it yourself. So what are some of the ingredients you're going to need to make bacon? Well, I've got some nutmeg over here, ground nutmeg, onion powder, I've got some whole thyme, I've got some peeled garlic that I did smoke in the Traeger, Smoked flavor sugar cure. Now you can also use the regular tender quick. I've got some Morton kosher salt. I've got some cumin seed. Now I remember seeing a recipe about this, but my recipe for some reason isn't gonna have it. And that's because I can't find the original recipe that had it. So if you know of a bacon recipe that has the cumin seed, hit me up with the comments below. Now I also got peppercorn, I've got some bourbon whiskey, I've got some bay leaf, over here I got some dark brown sugar, and some fine garlic powder. Now the special ingredient if you want to call it that, or I should say supply, is the two gallon jumbo size bag. That's right, two gallon. These are kind of hard to find sometimes, but this will really help you out because you're gonna cut that slab of meat up into proportion so you can actually make your cure. One of the first steps in making the bacon is preparing the number of chunks or pieces you want for your recipe. Now keep in mind, we're gonna make three different types of bacon. So I estimated with a Sharpie here before I cut it, approximate size of each slab. So there is almost equal parts of three slabs here. Now I'm gonna cut each slab and I'm gonna place them temporarily in a glass dish while we start making each individual brine. So what do the different brines look like? Well, this one here, that is the bourbon recipe from the Traeger's website, which over here, we're going to brush it on with the bourbon in, in a little bit. The second one here, that one there is the apple wood bacon. Look how much darker that looks. That one's got some bay leaves and some garlic in it. And this last one is the traditional brine. Again, we're gonna do three different types of bacon and I will post the recipes on the comment section below. The first step in the bourbon recipe is to coat the bacon or the roast here with some bourbon. We're gonna deliberately coat both sides with the brush here with some bourbon. And you know, make sure you're nice and generous on this and put it on there. Again, this is for the roast, not for you to drink. Okay, so over here, this is the bourbon 
Traeger recipe. And right now we have the bacon roast sitting in the bourbon. And we're just gonna kind of rotate a little bit, let it sit there maybe 10, 15 minutes. And we're pushing down, you'll see this fingerprint mark here, because we're pushing on the roast in hopes of it acting like a sponge and absorbing that bourbon. Next, we're gonna do the applewood smoked bacon brine recipe. Right now we have the roast here on this tray and I'm wearing some gloves here because this is gonna get messy. We're gonna sprinkle it on it liberally, nice and coated, and start patting it down. Now after we're done, we're gonna start massaging this stuff in there and really work it in because you want this stuff to be in here really super, super good. And just start massaging that. Now if it gets all over the place, that's okay. That's what we have sponges and we clean it up for it. And we're just gonna massage that in here and keep going. Now I notice I only have one side right now, that's okay. Because I'm gonna massage this, I'm gonna flip it, and we're just gonna get this thing nice and evenly coated. Now that's how you do the brine for the applewood bacon. So now after we're done massaging all of the brine into the mixture, I kind of gradually took my fingers and I pulled it off and I made this beautiful pile over here. Now I'm gonna take the roast, flip it over, and you'll see that this side has nothing on it. Just grab it like this, and the same thing, repeat. Sprinkle the mixture onto the roast and rub it in really super good. Now, we're working on the traditional version. We're gonna, again, sprinkle it on there, get it on there nice and good. We're gonna turn it over and do the same thing. Now this one, for some reason, the brine seems to come out a lot more. That's okay. We're just gonna sprinkle it on here, rub it in, and let it rest. Now we're working on the bourbon Traeger recipe. I drained the bourbon from the pan, and now we're gonna add the mixture and do the same thing. We're just gonna rub it on and keep rubbing it in so it's nice and coated. And then we can flip it and do the same thing. Now when we're done with these, we're actually gonna go ahead and put them into the two gallon Ziploc bags and we're gonna double bag them like we've done in previous videos. And why is that? Well, again, in the event of leakage, you don't want to make a huge mess. Stay tuned and I'll show you what they look like when they've been double bagged. So here's what the double bagged bacon looks like, the bacon cures. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put these in the refrigerator in the back of it so it stays really nice and cold. Every day, you flip it one time. But before you flip it, or when you do flip it, make sure you massage it really good, flip it, and let it rest for another 24 hours. You're gonna do this for seven days. And then, the magic happens, and that's when we Put it on the smoker. The pork belly has now been in the refrigerator for seven days. They are Ziploc bags, and every day, once a day, I turned it over, and then I can kind of rotate them around a little bit. Well, this is day number seven. The bag is still sealed here. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna wash off each of the pork bellies, and we're gonna lay it on a paper towel over here and let it air dry. We're doing that so it gets a little bit of a stickiness feeling on the outside. Here is the applewood bacon. Here is the traditional recipe. And over here finally is the Traeger recipe. So we have the three different bacon roasts ready to go into the Traeger. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and cold smoke them for about an hour or two using applewood. Well, here's the bacon in the cold smoker. I've got my Amaze over here. I've got the charbroil smoker. I think I'm gonna run them both, maybe add a little extra smoke, we'll think about that. 
I've got some traditional bacon, I've got some Traeger bacon, and I've got some traditional bacon, no, Applewood, no, wait, what bacon, what, dude, I forgot, well guess what, I got smart, I actually did a little chart here that I kind of drew out, and it shows what is where, so look at that, Applewood is right here in the front. On the top space is the Traeger recipe, and on the bottom is the traditional. Well, there you go. In order to avoid getting confused, draw yourself a little map as to what is what, and that way there, you know what is what. Okay, it's been about three and a half hours on cold smoke using the apple wood in both my Amaze Smoker and the Charboil Smoker. But what's funny was the Amaze Smoker actually went out, but the Charboil Smoker stayed lit. So now I'm firing up the Traeger on the smoke setting, and we're going to bring the bacon up to an internal temperature of 150 degrees. I am using my iGrill 2 meters to monitor the meat temperature. Okay, so the bacon reached the internal temperature of 150 degrees. I immediately took it off my grill and I threw it in my refrigerator. Now, I remembered to label each one as to what it is. Now, this has been chilling in my refrigerator for a couple hours. Now, I'm off to the slicer so I can slice these up and then I have bacon. The first step I'm going to do when I turn my slicer on is cut off as much of that fat as possible. That is a really thick fat cap. I didn't notice that when I was marinating it. So we're going to cut that off first. So right now we're slicing the bacon, about bacon you know, thickness, maybe about a quarter inch or so. And we're just going to lay them out here on a tray and we're going to keep slicing away until we're done. Then we're going to go ahead and either vacuum seal it and put it in the refrigerator or you can freeze it. Well, I'm going to vacuum seal this in the refrigerator because we love bacon. That is what the sliced bacon looks like when it's all sliced and done. Now we're going to go ahead and vacuum seal it, but that's, you know, something that you decide whether you want to do. Some people see this much bacon and it's gone in an instant. Well, that's how you make bacon. Thanks for watching Crazy Dave's Kitchen. Enjoy.